Hey guys, welcome back to the Fergie Time Podcast. Today, I will be ranking every current player at Arsenal Football Club. Before I jump into the rankings, I do want to give my criteria for each of these categories. So starting off, we have time to move on. Players who I think should leave the club and are no longer a good fit. Next, we have inconsistent players who have inconsistent performances and haven't been that good uh, this past season. Next up, we have young talent. And I want to explain this one a little bit. So the young talent, what I mean by that is players who are very young, very talented, but also haven't gotten a ton of first team opportunities. But I still highly rate these players. Um, Moving on to solid players who have had really solid and consistent performances throughout the season. Very good players who have stood out and maybe are some of the best players in the Premier League at their position. And then finally, world class, some of the world's best. So those are the criteria that I will be looking at when evaluating the Arsenal squad. Starting off, we have Callum Chambers, a right back, center back, and central defensive midfielder. Made 14 appearances for Arsenal this season. Was quite inconsistent, you could say. Last season at Fulham uh, was actually their player of the season, but there's questions around whether he's Arsenal quality. He's a solid defender, has good anticipation, cuts off passing lanes well, um, is a bit clumsy on the ball sometimes, but is really improving in that area. But still, I need to see more from Chambers in the Arsenal first team to show that he is an Arsenal quality player and I don't think he's fully proven that yet so I'm going to throw him in inconsistent. Reese Nelson. So Reese Nelson is a very very skilled young player. He performed very well at Hoffenheim when he was on loan roughly a season ago. In the 2019-2020 Premier League campaign, he made 11 appearances with Arsenal and only had five starts. So we're still waiting to see him um, perform, I guess, at that first team level for Arsenal, but he's a really quick player, elusive movements on the ball, can carry the ball really well, very talented. I'm throwing him in young talent. Next, we have a goalkeeper. Many of you will not be familiar with him, but it is Emiliano Martinez. So he is Arsenal's backup goalkeeper. So I'm going to be grading him as a backup goalkeeper because he's never been seen as someone challenging Leno. So this season, he took some matches in the Europa League. 77% save percentage has been really good. Whenever he's called upon, he's he's done really well for Arsenal. Has a high save percentage everywhere and every season he's played. So I'm going to throw him in solid because in terms of a backup goalkeeper, he's got to be one of the best in the Premier League. Ainsley Maitland now. So he is a wide midfielder or a fullback. Um, primarily been used by Arsenal as a fullback. And he made 14 appearances for Arsenal this year. He was all right, um, but he fell out of favor with Arteta towards the end of the season. He's a really good crosser, versatile player, likes to get up and down the pitch. But because he's not not a natural defender, he's not very good at defending. And I think this is partially why he fell out of uh, favor with Arteta. Not the grittiest player, and Ar- Arteta did actually say it was partially his mentality why he was dropped. Um, and I think we need to see more from Maitland Niles before we get an idea of will he be a consistent uh, face in this Arsenal team going forward. So I'm going to throw him in inconsistent. This is a difficult one. We have Lacazette. I know, I think he should be a shoe in for very good, but had a very disappointing season. Uh, in 20 matches, only seven goals, three assists for a player of his quality. He should have performed way better. I'm going to say it's a one-off season. I'm going to put him in very good. But that said, and and if Arsenal want to perform the way that I believe they can and Arsenal fans believe they can, he's going to have to step up his game because he's a really class player that played quite poor this season. Went a whole year without scoring away. That's a problem in the Premier League. But I'm going to go off some of his past seasons and and push aside this season and say, hey, um, he just just had a bad year. I'm going to put him in very good still because that's what I believe he is. Eddie and Katia. So he was on loan at Leeds earlier this season. Very young player, roughly only 20 years old. He's a fox in the box, likes to play in between the posts. Great finisher of the football. I think at Leeds in 17 matches, he had roughly three goals, but didn't start many of those matches. So he did have an impact while at Leeds in the championship. Still very young. Haven't seen nearly enough from him to put him anywhere above Uh, young talent, so he will be going in that category. Next up, we have Leno, who in my opinion is a very underrated keeper. One of the best 
keepers in the Premier League. This season, second in saves and third in save percentage with roughly 77%. He's very aggressive, likes to come out and get the ball. Sweeper keeper-esque has really good feet and I think complements Arteta's style very well. So I'm going to throw him into very good. This is a bit of a harsh one in my opinion. Next up we have Cedric. So Cedric joined Arsenal in January on a six month loan deal. He is a right back, but hasn't played at the club since joining. And now we've had this whole COVID-19 situation. So I believe it is unlikely that he will actually get any appearances at the club. I don't think he's an Arsenal quality player just from what I've seen at his time at Southampton. So I'm going to throw him in time to move on. I think he'll find another contract with another club. Rob Holding, a player who has had some very impressive performances over the past few years at center back for Arsenal, but suffered a very bad injury, uh, had him sidelined for roughly nine months. And since then he's made very few appearances and it's hard to say like what, whether Rob Holding will return to the form that he was at before the injury because he was playing very well. Um, and it, we'll just have to wait till he's fully fit and fully healthy uh, before making that decision. So I'm going to throw him in inconsistent right now because I think there's a lot of promise with Rob Holding, but we haven't seen it enough to, to say more than that. All right, Danny Ceballos, a player who came into Arsenal this season with lots of expectations. So in 14 appearances, he had two assists. I think some Arsenal fans would have hoped for more from him, but I think he added a level of creativity that Arsenal haven't seen in a really long time. He's a great dribbler of the football. He also is, um, he's really good at passing. He has great passing range, can ping passes across the pitch, but can also make really short, quick passes in the final third to get players like Aubameyang in behind. I really like Ceballos, and I think he's a player that's on the younger side and someone who's still adapting to the Premier League. And I think if Arsenal are able to re-sign him, this would be a really good move because I think two, three seasons down the line, he could be a very, very good player in the Premier League. Right now, though, I'm going to throw him into solid. Hector Bellerin, a right back for Arsenal with great potential like other players, but also has suffered many, many injuries. He's very athletic, likes to spring forward, crosses the ball well, is dangerous in the final third, fantastic pace, but has been greatly criticized for defensive positioning because he is quite poor at it. Makes good recovery defensive runs though, I must add, but his head is not always in defense because again, he was someone that started out as a winger, but then transitioned to the back line. Um, but with Bellerin, we haven't seen enough from him. I think his potential warrants a player that could be very good, but with issues with defending and then also injuries, I'm gonna throw him in solid. Kieran Tierney, a tremendous talent. In my opinion, could become one of the best left backs in the world, but like most other Arsenal players, is very, very injury prone. And because of this, only made five appearances for Arsenal in the Premier League. He did make four appearances in the Europa League and had two assists in those matches. So that way I think was kind of a testament to his talent. He's super quick, can drive forward with the ball, can go around players or cut inside, great crosser of the ball, uh, can make dangerous runs in behind as well. He's just such a versatile fullback and in the definition of a modern day fullback. Really good 1v1 defender as well. Lots of potential, but we need to see it from him in the Premier League before I throw him any higher uh, than solid. So he will be going into solid for me. David Luiz. So he has had a decent season for Arsenal. I would say their best center back option this year. Made 25 appearances for them. Um, zips the ball of the back line. He's a bit dodgy with his defending at times. Not the best decision maker, but good on the ball. Fits the style of play that they were trying to play. I think also a very good leader. Someone who always plays with lots and lots of passion. Um, but this is not, this is an older David Luiz. One who's definitely no longer in his prime. He's going to go in solid. Guendouzi. Central midfielder, 22 appearances, had one assist, but I really, really like this kid. Box-to-box -box player, 
plays with lots of energy, really good defensive instincts, can cut off passing channels, but also offensively can be effective. Great passing range. Also really good passing in the final third. I think he's a really, really good young player for Arsenal going forward. And I think he's definitely above the level of young talent because he's had already so many appearances in the Premier League and has proven to be effective week in and week out and has continued to smash expectations. So he is going into solid. Joe Willock, a central midfielder at age 20 who had a breakout season for Arsenal. He made 14 appearances in the Premier League, had two goals in the Europa League, has a knack for finding the back of the net as a midfielder, really makes late runs into the final third, and has really good finishing. I still haven't seen enough from Willett consistently because many of his appearances were uh, coming on as a late substitution. I haven't seen enough from him consistently to throw him into solid, but definitely in the young ca talent category and he's hovering right in between young talent and solid but he's going to go into young talent for now nicholas pepe disappointing season for a player that costs that much in the transfer window but only 23 years old very young still has lots of potential not a concern in my opinion in the premier league four goals six assists would have wanted more from him but not terrible uh we saw flashes of what he could really do fast player great pace um, very dangerous off the dribble, which is really, really good to see, and gets in behind well. Uh, dangerous in the final third, hell of a left foot, fantastic. In the Europa League, uh, two goals, two assists, I think we saw more of what he could be. This kid's going to be great. This season was a good first transitional year in the Premier League. I'm going to put him in solid and expect to see him flourish next season. Gabriel Martinelli, a center forward with the potential to be a superstar. So he made 26 appearances across all competitions for Arsenal, had 10 goals, 4 assists this season. Really impressive year from him. The question is, did he do enough to move out of the young talent category and up into solid? And in my opinion, he did. He caught the attention of the likes of Real Madrid, who are interested in him now. And I think he showed so much great spatial awareness. Uh, Fox in the box, really good in and around the net. Uh, just a super intelligent player and is also has this technical ability to go with it, good on the ball. He's going into solid for me and I think this kid has the potential to be world class in the future. But that is going to be five or six years down the line. Don't, uh, don't expect to see this next year, but really good potential from this kid and I think he's shown it this season. I mean, Granit Xhaka, there are so many directions I could go with this one. So, he's been sloppy, very sloppy player, has made some really poor mistakes, not great decision making at times, um, plays with passion, but often, often misdirected as we saw when he got into it with fans. Um, I think it's best for him to lead the club. Xhaka has great potential um, to be a very, very good player, but hasn't fulfilled it at Arsenal, and I don't believe he he will. I don't think it's a great situation for him. I don't think he fits Arteta's style. Like He doesn't switch the ball very well and often gives it away. He has good passing range, but doesn't make good decisions that playing that deep. And I think he, he makes rash decisions, as we've seen, make countless time and time again, tons of yellow cards, uh, given penalties by, by making poor tackles. I think Xhaka is going in time to move on for me. I think good player, but not a good fit and needs, I think needs a refresher, a new club uh, to kind of gain confidence at again. Lucas Torreira. Now I love this guy. He plays with a fire in his belly. He is a defensive destroyer. Per 90 minutes, he averages five interceptions and nine recoveries. So he is a really, really good defensive unit, covers the pitch very well, just has brings so much energy and clearly loves to play the game. On top of that, good, very good passer, actually surprisingly good in the final third especially. He can uh, find passes between channels, two forwards running onto it, has a, uh, I think a final third passing percentage of roughly 77%, so a really good all around player. And I'm, I think I may surprise people with this, but I'm going to put him into very good. Mesut Ozil. So we have a player with world-class ability, high wages, and poor behavior. Um, and because of this behavior and just his attitude towards the club, 
I think injuries as well, to be fair. He only made 23 appearances for Arsenal this season. If this c continues on, I mean, especially with the contributions he was making, half the games he was poor and didn't seem like he didn't want to be there. Um, if this continues on, I mean, this could be really, really bad for the club. So I think it's time for Arsenal and Ozil to pass ways. This has been, I think, brewing for a while now, and I think it's best for them. Like, I don't know if Arsenal will ever get the best out of Ozil again. His, a player of his quality, it's hard to let him walk, but considering the wages and what they've gotten for those wages, it's just not worth it anymore. Ozil, it's time to move on. All right, center back Pablo Mari. Uh, Left-footed center back, very technical, signed by Arsenal in January, so hasn't actually made any appearances for the club, but I do like the signing. I think he has lots of potential. Could slot in as a center back option for Arsenal at some point. I think we haven't seen enough from him, obviously, in the Premier League level and with Arsenal to put him, I think, anywhere above inconsistent. But I do like his prospects, so I think Arsenal should ser con seriously consider him after they're able to return and maybe see how he does in training as well as uh, in matches. So I'm going to put him in inconsistent from now, but could definitely move up into solid if he plays well. All right, Socrates, who's played center back role for Arsenal primarily. Mixed bag of performances over the past couple of years. Some really good ones, some quite poor ones, quite clumsy on the ball and sometimes clumsy defending as well. Um, and has made comments suggesting that he wants to leave the club, especially with him turning nearly 32, I believe he, he will be uh, shortly. I think it's time for Arsenal to, to let him move on. He doesn't necessarily want to be there. Last year of his contract will be next season. And I think hasn't contributed so much where you would like want to hold on to him. So I think if he does leave, let him leave. I'm going to put Socrates in. Time to move on. Seed Kolasinac, a left back who's often been criticized by Arsenal fans. Um, in my opinion, not a terrible player. I think he's he shows some really good qualities, but is quite inconsistent. Um, he made 17 appearances for Arsenal this season. Really physical, plays with a lot of grit, likes to get forward. Um, is a decent 1v1 player because he uses his size, but I think he makes some poor, poor decisions at times that can often cost him. I'm going to put him in inconsistent. I think he's not a bad player to have, I think, in your reserves or on your bench um, and can offer a lot uh, when players like Tyranny or Sokka um, do get injured. So I'm going to put him in inconsistent for now. Aubameyang, no question, he's going into world class. I mean, hell of a player. 26 matches, 17 goals, one assist. Has really been a player that's held Arsenal up in a season that's been super poor. I mean, he's like the one bright spot this year. Aubameyang has been fantastic since he's joined Arsenal in the Premier League. Before that was fantastic. Has has garnered the attention of the likes of Real Madrid. He is a world class player and no one can deny that. All right, we have Sokka, who's been playing as a left back, but is naturally a left midfielder. Only 18 years old, and I'm gonna put this kid in a place most of you probably won't suspect. So, 18 matches for Arsenal in the Premier League, three assists. In the Europa League, he had two goals and four assists. What a season this young man has had. Really good player, drives well with the ball, has the versatility to go around players either outside, but can also cut inside as well. Not the best defensively, but that's expected from someone who's not a natural defender, um, but does well to recover. Great pace. What he's shown this season is genuinely, in my opinion, he's one of the best this season, was one of the best left backs in the Premier League. Um, so I am going to throw him in very good just because I think the potential on top of what he's already done warrants a player who will be very, very good. I think it could be a little premature, but I'm going to go with it. Sokka is going in very good. All right, this is a funny one to end on. We have Mustafi. I mean, this is the definition of an inconsistent player. In 2019, 2020 season, only made eight appearances for Arsenal, mainly because he was just not in favor with either manager, but started to play towards the end of the year and actually did quite well. Um, and Mustafi, I think his issue is he's a player that 85 minutes of the match, he plays really well, looks really good. But in five minutes, he makes major mistakes. Like, there's just a series of mistakes Mustafi will, will make every other match that will be will cost Arsenal the game, and that's part of the issue. Um, he's good on the ball, 
but I think his main issue, like defensively, he's been criticized a lot and rightly so. He overcommits 1v1. And I think as a center back, that's something you really cannot do because you cannot, once you're beaten in behind, your team is screwed, right? So I'm gonna throw Musafi in inconsistent because I think he does, at times, he could string together five, six matches really where he plays really well, but then he puts together a match or two that just poor performances. But I think, I believe under Arteta, maybe we could see a better version of Mustafi. So he's going in inconsistent. All right, guys, so this is my ranking of every current Arsenal player. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. If you did, please smash that like button. Let me know in the comments uh, what what rankings you agree with and which ones you disagree with. I'm always looking for feedback and what you guys think. Um, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you. Take it easy and stay safe. Peace.